Hey guys, Kirk here. Today we're gonna to install BW's Turnover Ball Gooseneck Hitch. We're installing it in a 2021 Power Wagon Ram 2500. The installation is similar for other applications. For this installation, you'll be using a 15 16 inch wrench, a socket set, including 15 16 deep and shallow well sockets, 9 16 15 millimeter and 10 millimeter sockets, a swivel and extensions, torque wrench, pry bar, clamp, punch with deburring tool, drill bits including eighth inch, quarter inch, and 11 16 three and a half inch hole saw, drill, and impact. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel to stay up to date with all our latest content. Now let's get started. All right, before installation, I just want to make a quick point. If your ram has this isolator shock mounted on the top of the differential, you won't be able to use the drop down ball feature but you can call BW and they will send you out a rubber insulator that goes over the top of the hitch for free. You have to just call them at their 800 number. All right, we're gonna make some more space here for us to work. So we removed the spare tire, the heat shield, and next we're gonna remove this exhaust from the muffler to the tailpipe. There's one rubber isolator that we're gonna pull off the studs there. And then there's one uh, band clamp that with a 15 millimeter deep well socket that we'll remove. And then all of this will be out of our way. Next, we're gonna mark our pilot hole. With the kit is included a pilot hole bracket, which is gonna locate where we need to uh, center punch that hole. So if you notice here, the hole that's in this bracket is going to align with this hole. And the main body of this is gonna to be towards the passenger side. So what you wanna do is feed that through behind the cross member, push it up against the body of the cross member and slide that over. So that hole, if you see any material to the right or the left is not centered. Once you get that centered in that hole, you then wanna push this up against the body, like so. And then we're gonna use a vice grip clamp just to hold that in place. All right, with our template in position, you'll notice that there's a square hole and a round hole. The square hole is for 3,500 applications and the round hole is for 2,500 applications. Our vehicle is a 2,500. All right, with the bracket removed, we're now going to center punch off the hole that we marked. All right, and the pilot hole is going to be drilled with an eighth inch drill bit. We've moved to the bed of the truck now, and as you can see, here's our original pilot hole that we made from underneath the truck. We're now going to size that up, expand it to a quarter inch. All right, so what we're going to do now is actually make our own template for cutting the hole. So to, this will assure the cup from moving side to side or front to back. So what we did is just take a piece of scrap wood that we had in the shop, use the exact same hole saw that you're gonna to use to cut the bed and cut a hole in that. And then we're gonna place it down, get our cup saw in position and then hold this down with our knees as we drill and that'll keep everything aligned. All right, next, I've already oiled our uh, hole saw. And then what we're gonna do is once we get this in position, put some weight on the board to keep it from uh, moving. We're gonna start off by running the cup saw in reverse and then we'll go ahead and put it forward and cut the hole.
All right, now that the hole's cut, we're gonna clean this area up and then next deburr any of the uh, fragments left from that cut on that hole. Now that this is unfinished metal, you're also gonna wanna either spray, uh, paint that edge or use some sort of clear coat to uh, seal that from any rust. All right, we're back underneath the truck and we're gonna install these fastener blocks that are included in the kit. There's two of them. The way these are assembled is there's flange nuts that are pressed into this plate of steel. So just like any um, nut, the, the, the bottom of the flange is gonna be towards the uh, bolt when it's attached. So what we wanna do is insert these above the cross member here. We're fine, I found that the easiest way to do this is for the driver's side to feed this uh, fastener block from, the, from behind and then for the passenger side to do it from the front. So here we are on the driver's side. We're gonna make sure that the flange nuts are pointed down and feed this in between the raised parts of the bed here. So we're gonna rotate it into position. And as you can see, the main part of that fastener block is pointing towards the rear of the truck. And then we're gonna align the nuts with those holes there. All right, now we're on the passenger side of the vehicle. Again, assure that those flange nuts are pointed down and the bulk of that fastener block is pointing towards the rear of the vehicle. So now I'm gonna feed that above the cross member. And this one's far easier to install than the drivers. We just make sure that those threads are aligned and there it is. All right, now we're gonna attach the gooseneck to the cross member. This procedure is best done with an assistant. What we're gonna do is there's four locations on the side where it's gonna be bolted and then four more bolts are gonna go into those fastener blocks that we just installed. Now, when you bring this into position, you wanna make sure that the lever is pointing towards the driver's side. So now we're gonna lift this up and have my friend thread the front hole and then I'll begin one on the back. All right, next we're gonna thread the bolts into our fastener blocks that we inserted before. Just take your time with these. They're gonna slide around a little bit, but we'll be able to readjust those and get the threads aligned. So you just really wanna get a thread or two started at first to hold that fastener block in place. I found on this one here, I really had to hold the fastener block with one hand and thread the bolt in to avoid it from spinning. Next, we're gonna draw this all the way up to the cross member, not fully tight, but enough to where we can push this all the way up. So with a 15 sixteenths socket. Now that we got the goosenecks hitch pulled up to the cross member, we're gonna tighten these side bolts. Um, for these rear ones, due to this cross member in the bed, you really, you're really you gonna to have to use a ratcheting wrench to draw them in until you can get a socket on it.
So in the driver's side um, rear uh, front location next to the gas tank is really tight quarters. What I've done here is use a short socket with a swivel and two extensions and it brought the ratchet out past the gas tank so I can rotate it. Now we're going to tighten the lower four fasteners to 150 foot pounds. We're going to do this in an alternating pattern, drawing this completely and finish tightening it. All right, now that those four are completely torqued, we're gonna re-tighten the outer four bolts. Now we're going to put the carriage bolts in the latch pin mechanism. This is spring loaded, so just be careful. When you pull this over, make sure you engage it there so it doesn't snap back and pinch your finger. But now we're just going to drop these carriage bolts into the holes that are here. And then release it and bring it back into its closed position. All right, for the latch pin mechanism, it requires a pre-install of this pull and bracket. Now in our application we have a 2500 so the carriage bolts go through the very last two holes on this pull onto the bracket and the bracket mounted on the under face with this pull pointing up. If you had a 3500 it would actually attach to the inside holes and the pull would be facing down with the bracket mounted here. So refer to your instruction sheet make sure you get this pre-installed correctly. It's critical. Now to install this it's easiest to go ahead and remove the inner fender liner. It may look like you can do it without it, but trust me, it's way easier to go ahead and remove that. And then there's two plastic pins holding this uh, wiring harness. Again, it looks like you can do it with, but you really have to disconnect those. So pull that uh, pin out to release this harness. And there's another one just inside the frame rail that you need to pull as well to give this a little bit of play. And then we're going to bring that latch through this area and this pull will be right here. The best way to do this is have a friend on the outside of the wheel well kind of guiding this tab through as you're pushing it through because this is a really tight space. We're going to slide this up and rest it on the bed frame rail and feed it through. Mind this vent line here. As we get close to the tank, you want to keep this rotated down and then your friend's going to let you know when you clear the outside of the wheel well. There we go. I think we got it cleared there. Are we clear? All right. All right, now we're going to rotate this up to the carriage bolts that we installed before. And insert the flange nuts. And fully tighten these. All right, we're back in the bed of the truck. First thing you want to make sure is the latch pin is fully engaged. Then you want to put your hitch in there and it's going to rest on top of that pin, just like that. So you can see how high it sticks up. They include this cardboard template that goes over your hitch. And then there is four holes that we're going to mark into the bed. We can remove this template as well as the hitch. 
We're going to go ahead and punch those four holes. So we're going to go ahead and drill uh, pilot holes. We're going to start with an eighth inch bit and work our way up to the final size. So we're going to put a little bit of oil on our bits. These first two holes are going to go just through the bed, the sheet metal. These rear two holes are going to go through the sheet metal of the bed as well as the cross member. All right, next we're going to clean this area up. We're going to deburr these holes. Go ahead and seal them if you decide to do it with paint or clear coat. And then uh, we'll get those U-bolts dropped in. Now we're going to drop the safety chain U-bolts into the holes that we just drilled. And before we go underneath and uh, attach those fully, let's go ahead and open up this lithium grease that's provided with the kit. And what you want to do is put that on all the four corners of your pin. And just go ahead and rub that in on each corner. And then with the pin pulled, we can go ahead and drop this in. All right, we're back underneath the truck, and here are the safety chain U-bolts, the bottom of them. And what we're going to do is install this spring and nut to each one of them. I went ahead and started on these three, but I'm going to show you how to install it right here on this last one. So you feed the spring with the fat side up into the hole over that U-bolt, and then thread the nut on the bottom of that. Now these are locking nuts, so what we're going to do is drive these up until they're flush on the bottom of the U-bolt.
All right, we're at the final stage and we're just gonna replace all the OE components that we removed. So the inner fender liner, reattach those clips for that wiring harness, the exhaust, as well as the heat shield and spare tire. All right, that completes the installation. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you're looking for more information, click on the link below. And if you have any questions, give us a call or visit us online.